In Lighter Vein by Eva Bat, with illustrations by Jill Bennett. Land of Hope and Glory. Vegans tell the story, upright, firm, and free, never seeking glory, true and constant be. Nation unto nation, make our message plain. High or lowly station, nothing need be slain. When man kills no longer, love and peace shall reign. The shame of a second-hand coat. The baby seal with his big brown eyes and soft white coat is deemed a prize. His blubber's good for margarine, his coat on females can be seen. But not on ladies, they would never. From life itself the young one sever. Real people wear fake furs, tis said, knowing they're torn not from the dead. For lady you must understand, each real fur coat is second-hand. But if to own another's coat, we must first slit the creature's throat. Which one of us could wield the knife, spill the blood and take the life? Oh no, not me, one hears the chorus, we'll pay a man to do it for us. Yet many thoughtless ones are willing to patronise the senseless killing. Determined to be in the fashion, they close their hearts to all compassion. Approach with caution. The crocodile has a charming smile which reassures one for a while, but this is just a crafty wile, adopted by this gastrophile. Although he may appear docile, in fact this reptile's full of guile. Meanwhile don't rile this senile creature, his agile jaws can quickly eat ya. It doesn't make sense. O oh, wise man, you are old and frail, and yet your mind is keen. While sitting on your upturned pail, please tell me what they mean. The medicos all seem agreed, the others the ilk, that we should give our little ones oodles of cattle milk. While in their bottles mum should add what sugar so refined, regardless of her bouncing boys, fat cheeks and broad behind. Now tell me Mr Wise Man why, those who could best advise, do not explain to doting mums the dangers of oversize. Contrary wise, the vegan mum, her sturdier child will prize, alert and energetic with, firm limbs, bright hair and eyes. Can you tell lard from nutter? The vegan must learn many things, his brain may be cluttered, but one thing he is sure to know, which side his bread's not buttered. One way to fame. Not to be taken too literally, actually the nurses and doctors are kind and considerate. Some scientists would like to know, what makes a vegan tick? How can we live without pork chops and not get awfully sick? If you have ever volunteered a guinea pig to be, for doctors you must be prepared to lose all dignity. They poke you here and pinch you there and feed you barium, because they'd like to know how long it spends inside your tum. How fortunate it is that we of blood have many pointers. They help themselves to large amount whenever they can find us. Your pedal on their bicycle while blowing in a thing which looks like a gasometer tied up with bits of string. This jolly team are very keen researching this and that but if you turn your back on them they'll take some of your fat. Your brain will next examine be they don't do things by halves but cannot understand why we refuse the food of calves. The EEG assigned to me got tangled in my hair and then broke down or could not find a scrap of brains in there? No one could take this lying down. It's your machine, said I, that has a screw loose in the works. So we had another try. At last the graph translated was, abnormal, what a swizz. Perhaps I won't be too upset when I know what normal is. And when they have it all, they write a paper for the Lancet, which proves how healthy all can be, if only they will chance it. Know when you go to hospital, they put you on a spot. Take drops of this, a cup of that, and a slice from your you-know-what. But never mind, you're doing fine, specimens are all okay, and you may appear as number nine on a graph in the BMJ. Safety in numbers. A single hippopotamus could hardly manage all of us, but many hippopotami would surely put an end to I. If out alone I chanced to meet him, I'd be no match to kill and eat him. For in the end there is no doubt, it's either would be down and out. Never mind veggies. What is a vegan, we are asked by people when we meet. And how do vegans differ from veggies who just bar meat? 
They've just begun to understand the non-meat-eating cranks, but really cannot yet accept our non-milk-drinking pranks. To extract vegan from their name, lactose are somewhat cherry, for the word that's left is nothing but the silly one, itary. But turn these letters back to front, another word we've got. Veggies are left with just irate, which I'm sure they're not. So why not try an anagram before you eat that pizza? Then vegetarianism is I vegan meat, sir. With apologies to Lewis Carroll and Alice. The time has come, the vegan said, to talk of many things, like crated calves and broiler hens with crippled legs and wings, and how to set about the task of stopping all these things. Young Susan and her Uncle Joe were walking hand in hand. She wept like anything to see, killing throughout the land. Do you suppose, she said to him, such slaughter could be banned? I doubt it, said her Uncle Joe, standing beneath some oaks, for folk believe they need the meat for strong and healthy blokes, and they'll always believe what they want to believe, there's nought so queer as folks. The businessmen had started it, exploitation most refined, and greedy men to sponsor that were never hard to find. We'll feed more people, was their plea, we're really being kind. They're carefully omitted though, when talking to the masses, to say that many tons of grain must supplement the grasses, and this means hunger overseas for many lads and lasses. For all should know that one man's meat is another man's starvation, and feeding cattle on foreign grain a disgrace to any nation, as we take the food from the Indian child for our cattle population. The uncle and the little girl stood leaning on a gate, and little lambs came trotting up, unconscious of their fate, it's good they do not know, she said, they'll soon be on a plate. Now Susan was a clever child, she said in thoughtful mood. Cattle can eat eight times as much as their bodies provide as food. What a terrible waste of the fruits of the earth, which does nobody any good. That's not quite right, said Uncle Joe, a factual-minded man. Factory farming is very good for the agribusiness man. But I wish the first could see the results of his diabolical plan. The cruel constant suffering is bad enough indeed, and effluent from the zero graze pollutes the growing seed. Do you suppose, the small child said, there's really any need? I doubt it, said the carpenter, that was his craft indeed. Four baby kids then trotted up, all eager to have fun. Sue gambled in the grass with them, and asked them every one, are you sad to know you'll soon be gloves? But answer came there none. As Susan grew, she quickly learned more facts which must be faced, how milk comes to the table at a cost of wicked waste, the slaughter of the baby calves that we their milk can taste. But most of all I'm sorry for the poor old mother cow. She misses so her baby calf, I hear one crying now. I think she'd rather be a horse and pull a heavy plough. For being milk dry twice a day is surely bad enough, but having to bear a calf a year is really very tough. Just so that we can be supplied each day with milk enough, if you think that, the other said, you should drink the stuff. This makes good sense, and Susan thought, I never will again. At home she found it difficult, her motives to explain, but knew as well as helping cows, she was saving foreign grain. Grain which would save some foreign child from hunger or starvation, help to keep them fit and well, however low their station, and so engender love and peace in each and every nation. Fearless Fred Fred thought he would like to make a bed of nails like an Indian faker. Before lying on nails he decided some practice might be a good thing so he sat on a cactus. We haven't seen him since. Don't forget the diver. This is a plea to little boyses. Let quiet games be your first choices. Beware of making sudden noises for fear of shocking the porpoises. And if you go golfing, don't disturb the dolphin. Little Egg Machine They call her hen, this sorry egg machine, but how unlike the hens that were once seen, shut in her box, her life one long confinement, with hundreds more in orderly alignment, tier upon tier, stretch all these little prisons, no sun will ever light their small horizons, no moon, no wind, no rain for these poor things, no earth to scratch, no room to spread their wings, their duty is quite clear, an egg a day, if they should fail, alive they may not stay, keep up production, it's commercial war, an egg a day or you will be no more, you poor caged hen, 
You make no happy sound. You never learn to cluck. Can't strut around. Could you but know how once, not long ago, your forebears who were free to come and go, by day would roam the field with one intent, to search for tasty grubs when day was spent? An apple tree protected them from foxes, some slept in coops and cosy nesting boxes, no automatic feed supply like yours, they ate upon the grassland out of doors. The little children liked their food to scatter, would watch the hens and listen to their chatter. They earned their keep by laying eggs for men, it really is a foolish bird the hen. It should guess it could lead to exploitation, when man on profit has such great fixation. When unproductive, old and getting thinner, the bird herself becomes the family dinner. Dad wrung her neck, the modern chicken slayer, will have them brought to him on a conveyor, hundreds of them in upside down position. A man in a bloody white makes an incision, then slits the throat, the last thing they see, a greasy coat and scolding tank will be. And as he hums to blazing radio, a swift move, the next hen has to go. Keep up production, lay an egg a day. To stay alive, it is the only way. The day that you deliver not your eggs, they'll pluck your feathers, trush your wings and legs. Eviscerated plastic bag your shroud, your headless caught for sale, one in a crowd. They don't feel pain like you or I, so said one of these men. How does he know what chickens feel? Has he been a hen? What happens to the bird when it is dead is not our present problem, but instead. If more of us got onto our hind legs and one and all refused to eat their eggs, produced in these inhuman, cruel ways, we could exist without egg mayonnaise. Oh pink-nosed little piglet in a sty, your birth was engineered that you should die. You know not yet that it will be your fate to end your days as rushes on a plate. Besides your kidneys and an egg or two, poor little food machines, who will rescue you? Though striving to this end, we're far from near, the end of all this killing, stress and fear. For creatures who have every right to live, unharmed by man, who could their freedom give? Oh, might I live to see this slaughter cease, and man with all his brothers live in peace. Someone did not take our advice. Although he did not hate her, the alligator ate her. But soon enough, found she was tough, and swiftly out he spate her. Thirty years on, with apologies to the public school song. Thirty years young, but each year is growing shorter. Time flashes by as we struggle and strive, aware of life's evils, opposing the slaughter. Each day must bear witness that we are alive. Today we're surrounded with mass exploitation, believing the adage that might must be right, kowtow and sweat box, battery babies, raised in the dark for their gourmet's delight, roast sucking piglet, goose liver pate, calves kept in boxes, the veal must be white. Sore-footed chicken, deformed and dejected, egg-laying robots where life is all night. But vegans believe in life without killing, butcher no babies, cause no creature pain, no exploitation if only we're willing, enjoying our vegetables, fruits, nuts and grains, 30 years young and each day growing stronger. Gone are the doubts which beset us before, fears for the future now plague us no longer, we're digging for victory as never before. Food which is simple, first-hand, nutritious, from garden, allotment, or just window box. Grown in good compost, no blood or guts needed. Vegans get busy and pull up your socks. Sportsmen and doctors, artists and salesmen, are tending their gardens with vigour and vim. And joining the vegans, avoiding what ails men. For good health, a clear head and figure that's trim. Thirty years on, and we're not growing younger. Much to be done, and no counting the cost. Who then is with us, who will work for the new world? Delay may be fatal, the chance may be lost. For if we grow most of the food that we live on, we can live on the food that we grow. This is the goal for which many have striven. Heaven could then bloom on the earth here below. Nature designed the wool for the sheep. It is up to us to see they keep it. This is the tale of handsome James, good at lessons, keen on games who took his ma's well-meant advice and donned his woolies in a trice. Those undies tickled Jimmy's tum, but still he liked to please his mum. Because she thought, as many do, without wool he'd get colds or the flu. No one had told our Jimmy's mammy that wool makes skin all soft and clammy and holds the sweat against the skin, stopping fresh air from getting in. 
Perspiration, we ought to say, but it wouldn't fit anyway. So out into the world James went, on fame and fortune firmly bent, and started with a shop in session. He aimed to make a good impression. He asked for wool in every shop, and dressed in it from toe to top, and thus arrayed he faced the world. But ere uh, this banner he'd unfurled, the folly on him began to creep, of wearing stuff designed for sheep. With every washing day a lack, his vest crept further up his back, and woolly shifties tickled him, but it doesn't bother sheep, mused Jim, it makes a fellow stop and think. Attached to sheep, wool doesn't shrink, perhaps we make a frightful boner, taking it from its rightful owner. And still Jim's vest with every wash, is creeping further up by gosh, it's very short and getting shorter, it barely covers all it ought to. And life is not a bed of roses, when every sock exposes toeses. His knees are numb, his toes is frizz, we wonder where his senses is. A fellow cannot concentrate, and be the master of his fate, when introduced to Flo or Chi Chi, when costly underwear is itchy. Poor Jim has suffered quite enough, tell him there's vastly better stuff, and man-made fibres mixed with cotton, will stop him feeling quite so rotten. In winter warm, in summer cool, the best alternative to wool, no need to rub the sheep again, exploiting for financial gain, as well as handsome now our James, is not disturbed while playing games, at squash and tennis no one keener, and girls admire his calm demeanour, while sheep retain their woolly section, which nature gave for their protection, till envious man decided he, would like their wool to cover we, and bred his sheep until they grew, sufficient wool to cover too, then saying his sheep look much too hot, produced his shears and took the lot. With apologies to Rudyard Kipling. If you can eat brown bread when all about you are stocking up with chocolate eclairs, if you can trust yourself to stick to fruit juice whilst others toss a gin or two in theirs, if you can wait and not be tired of waiting for that plain green salad ordered long ago and listen not to friends so fond of stating you cannot thrive on vegetables, you know, if you can train your friends to serve you salads, and being sensible refuse french fries, or being fated, not waste time debating, but say a firm no thank you to pork pies, if you can cure your own unhealthy habits, retrain your palate to enjoy the best, that raw green salad and a baked potato will be consumed with more than youthful zest. If you could fill each poor and troubled tummy with good nutritious food in small amounts, You'd get no thanks at all for your trouble, but save them much distress, and that's what counts. Of course, Polly is graceful, Polly is slim, Polly is often dated, Polly likes salads with oil, it's her whim, Polly unsaturated. The Novice At gardening, I'm just the trop, and most enormous bricks I drop. Before I had a garden small, I said it is not work at all. Just leaning on a spade all day, watching the sun dry out the hay. Masterly in activity, now that was what appealed to me. I stood up straight, walked with a swing, before I started gardening. But now I know the gardener's plan, it's rarely humanitarian. He will appear to be quite willing, to pass the sunny hours killing, and spend the day as squashing bugs, at night he's dealing with the slugs. For every pest my garden caters, Green fly adorn my new potatoes, woolly aphis, leather jacket, what puzzles me is where they stack it, each one is such a tiny mite, yet gobbles everything in sight, but caterpillars can't abide, the holly bushes prickly hide, and earwigs take to heels and buses, from cactus, cacti, cactopuses? Maybe a patch of prickly's water, ensure a garden free from slaughter. My hands are cold, my nose is frizz, but I must tie up these irises. My back is bent, my toes are froze, a drip is forming on my nose. My ears are deaf to neighbours please, who beg my compost for their peas. You can't be a successful beaner, and keep a ladylike demeanour, when snails will wipe their dirty noses, upon the grass beneath the roses. I trim the hedge, I mow the lawn, but cheers, the old spare tyre is gone. Like the hedgehog, only more so. In sleep, the porcupine will lay supine, but when he's up and about, look out. Yet his heart is large and loving, and lady porkies know it. Unfortunately, nature stopped his ability to show it. Get together. For Keegan, a new life began when he followed the vegan plan. 
So if your name's Keegan or anything else and you are a vegan, look out for the rest of the clan.